in-depth sports coverage from The Athletic is now just £1 a month with an introductionary offer. See the link in the description to sign up. When he was 16 years old, Jonathan David was playing in the Ottawa Cup, a tournament for amateur men's sides from local soccer associations that included the best university players in the region. David's Ottawa Internationals had just beaten Gloucester Celtic, and the teenager had scored in the final. As the players filed past each other for the post-game handshake, Jay DaCosta, the longtime technical director of the Ottawa Gloucester Hornets Soccer Association, watched on as the older players, many of whom had been unaware of David, congratulated him on his performance. You're way too good to be here, they told him. Those players were right. David was too good. Now 20 years old, he's just completed a 30 million euros move from Belgium's Ghent to Ligue 1's Lille, becoming the centrepiece of the French side's attempts to re-qualify for the Champions League. And it's been quite a journey, from amateur football to becoming the most expensive Canadian player in history. Quite a story too. Back in 2016, Jade Acosta was impressed with David but still had reservations. I wouldn't have bet my mortgage that he was going to go as far as he has right now, he remembers. And few would have. David's path to Europe was unconventional, and he only arrived in France by betting on himself. Born in the United States before his family moved to Haiti when he was just three months old, David and his parents emigrated to Canada when he was six. He joined the Ottawa Gloucester Hornets when he was 11 after playing local house league soccer. He was a raw talent, with quickness, an accomplished first touch, and the capacity to overpower defenders, all elements key to his game today. His coaches remember players around him only wanting to show off their skills. David was no different at first, until he started working with Hany Almagrappi, the Hornets coach who would stay with him for the rest of his time in Ottawa, and who remembers an unusually pliable talent. That's what gave him an edge. You could teach him something, and he'd absorb it right away. And for the next five seasons, as David developed both his tactical acumen and his finishing ability, goals became the norm. When he started playing on the club's under-15 and under-16 teams in the same season, as well as Ontario provincial teams, he also began to separate from the pack and draw attention. There was interest from Canada's three MLS sides, the Vancouver Whitecaps, the Montreal Impact and Toronto FC. They wanted him in their academy setups, which of course left him with a decision to make. First team minutes are scarce for academy players at Canadian professional clubs, and MLS sides also spend heavily on foreign attacking players. David wanted to take a direct route to Europe, while Canadian clubs could only offer one with stopovers. So he stayed with Almagrabi in Ottawa, deciding also to finish high school. Now, to ensure he would achieve his goal of playing in Europe, Almagrabi doubled down. He didn't have the resources of an MLS academy. But that didn't restrict him from placing lofty expectations on David and his teammates. Al Magrabi wanted David to consider how to eat, hydrate and sleep properly, and how much time he spent with his friends versus alone with the ball. And it was deeply impactful. He's the one who really got me to where I am today, remembered David in a 2018 interview. He helped me a lot. Even outside of soccer, he was telling me just how to be a better man in life. Now, by the time he was 17, David had represented Canada at the 2017 CONCACAF Under-17 Championship, scoring two goals. His agent organised trials in Europe, an unsuccessful brief spell at Stuttgart, and six weeks at Red Bull Salzburg, who had interest in signing him. Toronto FC also offered David a professional contract, but he continued to resist the easy path, gambling on himself. The last stop on his European tour was Ghent. Still just 17, David travelled back and forth between Ottawa and Belgium while on trial, and in January 2018, his perseverance was rewarded. On turning 18 and finally becoming eligible for a professional contract in Europe, he signed for Ghent and finally had a home on football's mainland. And he'd score on his professional debut too, rescuing a 1-1 draw in stoppage time against Zultavarikum. Three more appearances would yield another four goals. A new contract, and by the end of his first professional season, 14 goals in all competitions. By the end of his second season, interest was already building. Arsenal, Manchester United, Leeds, Brighton and Hove, Crystal Palace and Borussia Mönchengladbach were all paying attention. Even more so after David produced a further 23 goals in all competitions and finished a truncated Belgian season as the league's joint highest scorer. The secret was out. David was an exciting part of the game's future. 
but it was the opportunity to start in his favoured position as a striker every week that swung the balance, as did the opportunity to play for a side with a rich history of developing young players. And Lille is very much that club. Johan Kabay started his career there. So did Lucas Digne and Eden Hazard. Frank Ribéry was also briefly a member of the Lille Academy, while in the present day, Jonathan Ikone, Jonathan Bamba and Renato Sanchez are among the best young players in the division. I wanted to go somewhere where I knew I could keep getting better, could keep playing, David says. Canada has a lot of talent, maybe we just don't have the exposure yet. With Alfonso Davies now a European champion at Bayern Munich, and with David's rapid trajectory continuing, that seems likely to change. The Athletic is in-depth sports coverage that helps fans see the game from every angle. And Tifo is delighted to be able to offer full access to The Athletic now for just £1 per month. See the link in the description for details of this introductionary offer. For football fans, that's access to the writing of journalists dedicated to your team. Plus, David Ornstein, Phil Hay, Daniel Taylor and many more. Not to mention over 400 full-time writers offering inside access and independent analysis of every team that you follow across every league that you care about. Get local expertise and unmatched league-wide perspective. The Athletics writers are in the bubble, on the field and behind the scenes as it all happens. Catch up, go deep, and join the conversation on the most important happenings in sports.